this. This is one of the most exciting products I think we've released in a very, very long time um, for people who use a Raspberry Pi. Yes. So we uh, had this coming soon and we took some sign up. We're making more and more. We have the Cricut hats. This is the fourth iteration of the Cricut line, which is a, basically a helper board that does all the robotics hard stuff for you. So you can just stick to writing your Python code to do whatever you want your robot to do. Um, so this Cricut, unlike the previous ones, which were like Microbit or Circuit Playground Express or Feather Shaped, this one is um, Raspberry Pi hat shaped. So let's go to the overhead. I can yeah. show this demo. And if anyone who uses Raspberry Pi and tried to do robotics, it's always a challenge. And that's just the way it is because the Raspberry Pi is still somewhat new. And getting things to move and all the hardware and all the drivers, it's um, it's not easy. It's, it's Linuxy. Yeah. And so we think we fixed it. We think we have everything you need now to do robotics with a Raspberry Pi and also works with CircuitPython. Yes. So if you use CircuitPython anywhere, this will be very familiar. Or Python 3, same thing. The drivers are the same across the board. So the Cricut hat is just like a hat. It plugs in um, right on top and it gives you all of the things that um, uh, that a Raspberry Pi doesn't do well. So, um, you know, I'll turn it off in a second, but you can see it's, it's rotating a DC motor. So this is a standard uh, brushless motor. It's got servo control. Um, and I'm going to turn it off just to, so it's not making noise. Um, it's got, um, turn it upside down so it's more readable. So it's got um, four servo connections. So you can connect four uh, hobby servos, you know, the, the ones that take a, a pulse input, and it does all the timing for you on chip. So you get four servos, eight analog inputs, or like digital outputs. So if you need uh, analog inputs or, or PWMs or whatever, you can get them from this port. You get a three volt power, ground, and a signal. There's a speaker connection. On other crickets, this is just connected to like the analog output of the Circuit Playground Express or something. On this, there's an I2S amplifier. So it actually takes the digital data and will give you like high quality audio output. Um, you can use small speakers or like enormous speakers, anything, 4 to 8 ohms, pretty much any speaker you can think of. Plug it in, it'll give you uh, three watts of audio. There's a NeoPixel driver. Again, Raspberry Pis aren't good at driving NeoPixels. Um, you can kind of do it, but this the chip does it all for you. So you just send it you know, up to a thousand pixels worth of data and it will do the timing for you automatically. You don't have to worry about using a special pin or anything. Um, it's all over the Python commands. We've got um, the motor ports. This is what I've got this uh, standard DC motor connected to. So any five volt motor can connect up. You get two bi-directional motors or you can use one bipolar stepper. Where so are the headers someone wanted to know? Oh, these, what are they? Yeah. Um, these are the signal IOs. So you can get eight pins and each pin comes with a matching power and ground so that's why there's like three in a row um these come from the microcontroller and again you control them over python but you can like analog inputs you don't have on a raspberry pi but if you have analog sensors that you want to connect to you can plug them into here so you can read like a potentiometer or like a, some distant sensors have analog input or output you would use these um you just plug in headers into the um, like wires with the headers oh the pi headers they look like they can take stackers through them you, you could stack through them right now it has like a, a basic non-stacking header but yeah you can stack on top if you'd like they, <laughs> they, they can go straight through um, and this is um, a four pin uh, drive output so you get five volts and then four uh, they're called like Darlington outputs so you can drive solenoids unipolar, unipolar steppers or some some basic um, you know high current device like high current LEDs or stuff. Um, this will do high current drive up to a half an amp per output um, with a, a, a Darlington transistor with uh, feedback um, diodes, a kickback diodes. So you don't have to worry about like your solenoid voltage coming in and damaging anything. Power comes in through here. So this is your five volt power. Um, you can also use this to power the Pi, although honestly I recommend having a separate power supply just because um, it's best to have like separated two power supplies, one for your logic and one for your motors, because you know the motors can draw quite a lot of current and then they can be a little noisy. But power comes in here and you can turn it on or off. Um, there's a little LED that tells you that the power is uh, good or bad. If you, um, if you, for example, uh, powered this separately and then you unplugged the, this power, um, you know, it turns off to let you know like, hey, like, you know, that, that wasn't a good idea. Like you don't have power on the, um, cricket hat anymore and you can see it turns turns red um there's a reset button there's usb so this is interesting this is for updating the firmware on this chip 
but also it's a USB to serial converter. So you can use it to um, log into your Raspberry Pi. Like it, it, on the other crickets, it doesn't do that because there's no real reason to, but since we had two extra pins, we just added a USB to serial converter software to it. So you just plug this in and you can use it to like, you know, log in directly with um, any ser uh, serial terminal software. And then down here we have uh, four capacitive touchpads. So again, these are all handled by the Seesaw chip. So if you wanna like touch something or have your robot, um, you know, have like a soil sensor or you want to have some sort of capacitive measurement, you get four alligator clip pads as well. Okay. And then we have slots here for like the camera and the display. So you can still use it with the camera and display just fine. So add like a robot with, um, you know, vision to it, or if you want to display output. Um, again, if you, you can program this all in Python and make a very advanced robot, and all the robotics are taken care of here while the, the logic is taken care of by the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, and like Dave said, I was just about to say the same thing. I like the little um, serial interface so you can log into it. It's totally an um, extra. Okay. But it was free. Yeah. So um, just a couple quick questions since this is such an interesting product. I think people, <sighs> There's yeah, so much. People will answer questions during this because I think a lot of people who watch the new product video later will want to see this. Yeah. Um, so we answer the header question. Um, will it include the .h.c.cpp sources? It's actually all... In Python, the, right. the, the language that you use to program this is all, it's over I squared C and we have a Python library um, called Seesaw and Cricut. Uh, and you just install it with pip, pip install, and the, the instructions are, are like in the guide. And then um, the code that goes on here is the Seesaw code that's already on GitHub. Okay. And that is in C, C, uh, C and um, C++, but you can just grab that on GitHub if you wanted to modify it. Um, and then uh, people are answering the questions together, but uh, I'll just ask this. How many of the Raspberry Pi IOs are left after the Cricut hat takes what it needs? Um, the Cricut hat only uses two pins, I squared C. So there's only SDA and SCL, and you can share those. You, it, it only uses one I squared C address. The I2S amplifier, if you're going to be using that, uses three GPIO as well. But again, that's um, optional. You don't need to use it. Um, and then there's two more pins that you can barely see here. If you would like to use, you can jumper IRQ pins, but you don't need to use them. Um, it, it does make it a little faster if you use an IRQ pin on the Cricut, because uh, you're not busy waiting on um, I squared C. But other than that, all the other pins are available. So I think you get like maybe like 20 more GPIO. Yeah. But only only I squared yeah. C is used. Everything else Bill's is- Bill's in the chat. He had a Pi to Feather converter. He doesn't need that anymore. Can yeah, he uses this. And then the other thing is, yeah, I think um, this is going to be a popular product, so sign up for it. I, I, we put in a batch, I think. We're we, putting a batch. We're going to put in some more very soon. But yeah, sign People up. People have been waiting for this.